Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Michael Gibson, and we'll be talking about the work he does behind the scenes as an acquisitions editor for Fortress Press. Mike, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. Well, Mike, if you would, give us a little bit of insight into your background, maybe a a, a bit of your education, and, and some of the different types of roles you had before you came to Fortress Press. I came to Fortress about two years ago, I was a, an associate editor at another publisher for about three years. And I started in publishing really out of the academy. I started working in publishing as a freelancer during doctoral studies at Vanderbilt. So I was doing indexes and copy editing as a way to supplement student income. And I eventually moved into publishing as a full-time job from there after I completed comp exams at Vanderbilt. Before I was a PhD student, I was a seminary student at Princeton Seminary and studied with George Hunsinger. So the BART genealogy runs kind of deep, which kind of comes through in acquisitions over the last year or so. I've been studying theology for nearly 15 years now through graduate education and did some provisional work uh, as an undergraduate. But, I, you know, I came into publishing through the academy. I initially was sort of on the, the typical track for a PhD student and thought that I would wind up teaching. But just through kind of happenstance, I wound up getting a job in publishing, specifically religious-oriented publishing, which has been really great. I mean, that's kind of been a very fluid transition from academic research and classroom work into editing and acquisitions work later with with Fortress. So I've been preparing for this in a certain way, but, you know, it's also kind of an accidental thing, which has turned out very nicely. It's been really great to be able to sort of utilize that background in training in kind of an unexpected way. But that's really kept me in similar circles that I traveled as a student and using the, you know, the kind of analytic tools and familiarity with the field gathered through graduate and doctoral education to apply that in this way and in this work. It's been both a fun challenge, but one that I really have gravitated to, and I really enjoy what I do. Well, and I always find it really interesting to get a little insight into everybody's journey, you know, what we think we're going to do when we're at the undergraduate level and the master's level. So many of us start out saying, well, I'm going to teach or I'm going to do this or that. So it's it's fun to get some insight into your journey, where you started and, and to see where you've ended up today. The journey takes many unexpected turns. It, it does for sure. I never would have expected that I'd wind up doing something like this. I mean, 10 years ago, uh, I had a totally different understanding of who I was and, and what I wanted to do. But it turned out in, in a way that was completely unanticipated, but one that I wouldn't change. Well, it really sounds like w- with what you describe, what you're doing now is, a, on the one hand, a good fit for you know, your education background and experiences, but also sounds like it just draws on some things that you really enjoy. I'd be curious to hear, what was it that drew you in or, or brought you to Fortress Press? Well, first, the heritage of Fortress. As a seminary student and later as a, as a doctoral student, you collect lots of books throughout seminary and graduate education. And one thing that I noticed on my shelves, how many of those books had that iconic F on the spine. And that kind of legacy, that kind of heritage, particularly in my field in systematic theology, my fortress has such a vanguard reputation for academic theological work that when the opportunity opened, when I became aware that 
they had an opening for an acquisitions editor. That was something that I latched onto immediately. At the time, that was sort of the next step that I was looking for in terms of my own career in publishing was to move towards an acquisitions position. And I really couldn't think of a publisher more relevant to both my own background in academic theology and that kind of legacy with those volumes and, you know, all of those authors that I encountered during, you know, formative student years, but especially kind of moving into a a position that I was really looking for at that particular time in my own work life. I mean, it was tremendous coincidence of interest and I jumped on that immediately. Well, and we both made mention several times of your title, which is Acquisitions Editor for Theology. Tell us a little bit about what does an acquisitions editor do? Maybe how does this role differ from other editorial roles you might see at a publisher? Right. Well, different publishers are set up different ways. Some publishers, there's not as much stratification in terms of an editorial role. So I had a position previously where there wasn't, you know, an exact demarcation between acquisitions and, say, content or development editing, which refers more toward or more to the kind of technical editing that goes on with the contracted projects with manuscripts that are in-house. Other publishers, and Fortress is one that has acquisitions editors, so editors that are dedicated to bringing projects to, to fruition through the contracting process, through the creation and development of proposals. So ac- acquisitions really in a way, refers to that work of generating projects. And that happens a a number of ways. There is sort of an organic process in which, through relationships, through networks, you know, an editor develops connections with scholars, with writers, and those projects come through those channels. In other times, there's somewhat more of a of a remove where projects may come in either what's called over the transom. So these are projects that are submitted at one time. The over the transom really referred to things that were thrown under the door or over the door blindly. Now that's more electronic. There's a, a, a submissions portal. So these are are projects that. The author and the editor may not have uh, a, a connection to each other, and there the you know an acquisitions editor will take those proposals, evaluate them, sift out whether there's potential. In both instances, though, there may be some creative work that goes on. So not every project comes in as a fully formed proposal that's just ready to go as is, you know, there's a kind of a deliberative process and one in which the editor works closely with a potential author shaping that project. In some instances, project ideas are created in-house, either with an individual editor or a team of editors where, say, the editorial team thinks of uh, topics or particular kinds of projects that they would like to produce, and they work on generating certain ideas or materials uh, that you can then work with or present to potential authors. And kind of in in the, the context of that relationship, the idea sort of takes different permutations, but, that, you know, that idea originates within an editorial department, and eventually it's kind of out of the relationship that the editor has with an author. But acquisitions in general, you know, that's really where projects happen. So we, we are largely responsible for 
the projects that that go through the the process and you know, our our publications all start there. Well, it sounds like it's kind of a mix. On the one hand, you have new projects and manuscripts that are coming in from authors who are basically soliciting us as a publisher saying, hey, would you publish my monograph? But it also it sounds like you have projects that we're coming up with, say, internally and reaching out to potential contributors and authors. So it's a, it sounds like it's a bit of both. It really is. It's kind of a diverse position in terms of, of how projects originate. And yeah, you, you do have a, a number of projects that come in that somebody just looking for a publisher, but you know, on a number of projects, they're very relational in character. That is, they come out of a, a collaboration between editor and author and others. The collaboration that happens inside the press kind of uh, at the start and then a further collaboration between editor and, and author. Well, we talked a bit about your education background, and obviously that plays really well into what you do. But I'd be curious to hear a little bit about, you know, what's your passion or, or drive? You know, what, what keeps you going and keeps you excited about the work that you're doing? I think I would characterize that as a sense of participation. I think what draws me in this is, on the one hand, participation in Fortress's mission. You know, there's a, a tremendous heritage, as I mentioned before, being part of that, being part of a really dynamic and talented team that we have here. So being part of that and collaborating with fellow editors and other staff members, that really, I think, generates a, a lot of passion for what we do, uh, you know, in kind of a, a, a general way and on kind of a meta level. Another sense is participation in the field of knowledge. So even though my own path has, has sort of kind of taken a, a different course than I initially envisioned, you know, as a traditional academic, I, as someone who is in publishing, someone who is an acquisitions editor, I participate in some manner in that field of knowledge, kind of in a, in a different way, but I look at kind of the role that I have as somewhat tutorial, that I'm moving projects into that field of knowledge and sort of directing conversations behind the scenes with the projects that I work on. And that gives me a, a lot of excitement and passion about, about what I do. It's different than, say, producing a, a monograph myself. In a certain way, I'm shepherding a, a kind of a, a wide array of texts and projects that have immediate bearing on the field at large, on particular conversations that have an effect on kind of an area of knowledge that I care very much about. That's something that drives me every day. Well, one of the things that's unique about your position now, I'm based out of our Minneapolis-based office here for Fortress Press, but you're actually what you might call a remote or, or distance editor. So I'd be curious to hear from your perspective, you know, what are some of the unique advantages that gives you in your job? Well, what are also some of the challenges you face not being here in the office with the rest of us? Yeah, I mean, this has been a, a really great opportunity to do this job in this way, and I really appreciate it fortress kind of experimenting with this, it definitely has provided a great level of flexibility, both for my family, so we didn't have to uproot and other members of, of the family changing jobs and, and all that sort of thing. So that's allowed my partner to continue in her career and, you know, in, invest in uh, her work life in an area that she's been in for a while. So that's been tremendous. For me personally, there's also been a great level of flexibility and fluidity. Uh, this kind of arrangement in a certain way really allows for kind of a high degree of efficiency. So you, there's no commute other than walking from the bedroom to my office, <laughs> just one room over. 
So, you know, commute times are gone. A lot of the peripheral traffic of an office is eliminated that way, too. So in a way, like a, an eight to six workday is really that. And that allows me to focus and to, I think, expend time and energy in a certain way that's not possible within an office environment. But of course, with all of the, the technology that's available, this sort of arrangement is really very easy and very simple to set up and to to execute. And in a lot of ways, it's more convenient and efficient. I typically get faster responses, sending off an email or you know an instant message to someone that I might walking down the hall and trying to track somebody down in a cubicle. <laughs> I think in another way, this arrangement also allows for pretty pretty fast and efficient appropriation of schedule and routine, especially if there are new procedures or changes to the process. For someone like me, it, it's actually not uh, much of a disruption at all to make certain changes in this kind of setting, since the setup and the process itself is already so, I think, minimal in terms of you know how everything is set up some of the downsides to it of course you you miss th- that personal interaction and you miss kind of that proximity to coworkers and having having the ability to have those conversations and interchanges on a routine basis and there are other sort of small challenges, you know, as I mentioned before, before we started talking here, that where we are in particular, our living quarters are actually kind of in a gully. So, you know, we have reception issues occasionally and, you know, on a big conference call or something like that, I mean, that <laughs> that can be annoying or disruptive. So, I mean, you, there are, of course, like, small technological challenges and, and, and such. Uh, on the whole, I find it to be net positive and benefit working in this kind of arrangement. Thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Mike Gibson. This is part one of a two-part interview series. To view the show notes for this episode or leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 004. Fortress Press Live is available via iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.